Welcome to Instant Deck Techs. The aim of this series is to give you a short, concise guide on how to build a certain deck. It won't cover every card, but we'll go through all the categories and go over the types of cards needed to make the deck work. Any card mentioned will be down in the description below. The commander of this deck is Dralnu Lichlord. It is 3 blue black for a 3 3 legendary creature, Zombie Wizard. It has, if damage would be dealt to Dralnu Lichlord, sacrifice that many permanents instead. It also has, tap, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until end of turn. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. This will be built in the style of a spell slinger deck, as such we'll want to run as many instants and sorceries as possible. Giving spells in our graveyard flashback will mean that we can recast them again, and there will be an element of self mill involved to help speed up that process. We'll probably want around two thirds of the spells in our deck to be instants and sorceries to really take advantage of this flashback ability. The obvious downside to Dralnu is that it will very rarely if ever be getting into combat, and blocking even less. It's also very weak to direct damage, so we'll be playing some ways to protect it. Speaking of, let's start with that protection, as we really want to make sure nothing happens to our commander, as we don't want to be sacrificing our own lands at any point in the game. Often in decks I'll include counterspell style effects in my interaction, but this is not a deck where I would do that, we want to keep our counterspells for anything that threatens our commander, or for any effects that would cause us to lose the game. After those we can look at some more traditional artifacts that stop Dranu from taking any burn spells to the face, with mage band armour being a nice addition to the standard swiftfoot boots and lightning greaves. Next up is card draw. I would really not want to skimp on this category, and would want to run between 12 and 16 of these effects. What you're generally looking for is card draw that also puts cards into the graveyard, as with a commander they are effectively part of our hand. I've put on screen here spells all up and down the curve, but I'd really focus on spells like Thought Scour and Careful Study that really do a good job for not that much mana of drawing us through our deck. This is definitely one that wants to be casting multiple spells per turn, and cheap spells really help with this. A quick note before we move on from card draw, and that is River Kelpie, which will draw us a card each time we cast a spell from our graveyard with our commander. For our dedicated interaction, Demir has a ton of great options available to you. The general split of 4 bits of targeted removal with 4 board wipes should suffice, but as this is a creature light deck you could definitely focus more on the board wipes if you wanted to, but pack the answers that you think will suit your meta. To go with all the instants and sorceries that we're running, we're going to want to run some ways of making those spells cheaper. As mentioned earlier, we really want to be casting multiple spells per turn, and these will really help us out with that. These aren't to be confused or included with our ramp, which we'll get to shortly, these should be run in addition to any ramp that you're running. There are some other cards that work well in this category, such as Catalyst Stone and Gravebreaker Lamia, as they make the spells with cards from our graveyard all that cheaper. For our ramp, I'd want to split these into two sections. The first is the standard rock package, with things like Soul Ring, Demir Signet, as well as others. While they don't synergize too much with our deck, they'll be consistent and do a great job at getting Dranlu out nice and early. The other half of our ramp, I'd look to run on Instants and Sorceries, with Rituals being key to this. They're much more explosive, but we only really get to use them once or twice with our commander. On top of these we can look at running the much more all-in High Tide and Bubbling Muck style of cards, and then combining them with Realm Rite and Urborg Tomb of Yorgmoth to make all of our lands tap for extra mana. Casting these multiple times per turn will mean we'll be able to generate a terrific amount of mana with this deck. When we get to our win conditions we will be touching on Storm, and if you're going to go that route then I would say these are a must. If you're not so keen on the Stormy route then I'd play a few more mana rocks in their place. One way of getting the most out of this deck is by running cards that untap our things, and chiefly our commander, as what this will mean is that we can use this ability multiple times per turn. In a similar vein to the rituals we mentioned, these will lead to some big game winning explosive turns. Moving over to the win cons, a standard one in a spell slinger deck is cards like these, that gives us creatures when we cast instants and sorceries. This is one of the reasons we mentioned earlier about wanting to be able to cast multiple spells per turn, as with two or three of these out we can get a board state very quickly. Another way to maximise the spells we're casting is with effects like these, which in some way allow us to cast our spells again. We won't get any cast triggers from the copies, but having multiple effects of some of our bigger spells we're running will definitely be worth it, and that's not even taking into account things like high tide, or removal, or card draw. In terms of some big spells, you can look to run something like Exsanguinate to drain out our opponents, or Mass Manipulation to take the best things on the board. There are more of these big X effects out there, so run the ones that you have available to you. These will definitely be helped out if they're being copied or having the cost of them reduced. If you're looking to up the power level of this deck, then you can look at running some tutor effects. These aren't a must for a stereotypical build of this, but if you're going down the more combo route then they get much better, as you can tutor up your combo pieces. Speaking of combos, you can look to run some of the Labman style effects, combining them with something like Demonic Consultation and Doomsday. Basically you swiftly make it so that you have no cards in your library with Demonic Consultation or Doomsday, then you combine them with Thassa's Oracle, Laboratory Maniac, or Jace Wielder of Mysteries, which lets you win the game when you have no cards left in your deck. Another win con on the more combo side is the aforementioned storm win condition. We don't have enough time to go over all the lines and ways that these can win, but basically you cast as many spells as possible, using card draw and rituals to add to the number of spells you've cast each turn, or if you will, your storm count, and then you cast a storm card like Tendrils of Agony or Mind's Desire to get that effect equal to your storm count. You also have things like Aetherflux Reservoir doing a good stand in job for one of these cards. If you're going to build it this way, I definitely recommend goldfishing it as much as possible before you go and play it out in the wild. 
Moving on to some utility lands, as this deck has cards like High Tide, I wouldn't run as many as normal. I'd say up to 6 is a sweet spot. These on screen all do good effects that the deck is already running, so will help you move your game plan forwards. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We've recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base, which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck deck on. Thank you very much for watching.